What's going on YouTube? Jay here and it's about time I bring us some videos regarding my 4790K that I picked up when I was in New York City uh, at the Micro Center out there in Patterson. And I tried, I've already spent a lot of time today trying to do a different video that I'm just going to scrap and start all over. I've been trying to see how well the 4790K performs on a Z87 platform, which you may or may not know is the 4770K or the first generation Haswell platform. This gigabyte board that I'm using, the UD3H, is a fantastic board for the 4770K, the 4670K, and the first gen Haswell stuff. But this motherboard and this BIOS from Gigabyte, it tried to kill my processor when I first booted it up. I knew better than to just boot it up and go. I knew to check all the settings, make sure everything was kosher, and it had my voltage set to 1.501 volts. 1.501. I wouldn't be surprised if they took some life off of my processor just from idling it at that voltage. I mean, it's just, excuse my language, but fucking around with this thing for hours and hours today, the UD3H has to go. It's just not doing well with my 4790K. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take my MSI Z97 M Power, and we're gonna throw that in there along with the 4790K. We're gonna talk about overclocking, we're gonna talk about this motherboard and see how things go. Now, first things first, let's go ahead and talk about this motherboard and some of the features that it has. I mean, it does have, I mean, obviously it's all about overclocking. The M series from MSI, it's all about overclocking. Anything yellow is overclocking when it comes to MSI. I mean, it supports fourth and fifth generation, so future processors coming out, uh, like Broadwell, for instance, coming out next year. Uh, Z97 Express chipset, it supports up to 3000 megahertz RAM, or megahertz, megahertz RAM. Uh, it's got a it, Intel gigabit ethernet, eight channel, 7.1 HD audio. It's got three times PCI Express, 3.016x slots. It is only capable of SLI though. It's not capable of three-way. Uh, it does have six SATA six gigabyte or SATA three six gigabit per second ports uh, from the Z97 with RAID support. So that's directly hooked up to the chipset. And it does have two SATA six gigabit per second ports for the AS Media ASM 1061 controller, eight USB 2.0s, two in the rear, six in the front, and eight USB 3.0 ports, six in the rear, two in the front. It does have expansion capabilities of three times PCI Express times one, uh, one times PCI Express 2.0 16 inch slots, and one M2 slot. It's got a whole bunch of other things going on with it, along with you know MSI Military Class, OC Genie, and all that stuff. So uh, it's also got the audio boost where the audio is separated from the rest of the components on the motherboard so that you're not getting noise and interference from uh, the power going through the motherboard. So there's the motherboard right there. We're gonna go ahead and get my air cooler. We're gonna do air cooling on this just to see how well the 4790K performs under air. The new thermal paste is supposed to be fantastic. So let's go ahead and get that installed in here. Let's drop it in here and see how this thing performs. Well, let's not, let's not like physically drop it uh, because it does say, you know, military class and it's tough, but I, I, I still wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. All right, so part two of this video. Uh, this has actually been ongoing now for quite a few hours. In fact, I've got about five or six hours worth of tinkering time now on this 4790K. But before we talk about that, let's go ahead and finish talking about the motherboard. Now the Z97 M Power motherboard, it carries over all of the legacy features that you would expect from all of the other M Power motherboards since the Z77 series. Very stable overclocker. You can adjust every single aspect of the motherboard, every single voltage. Everything is customizable, and that's what makes these motherboards so awesome. The sound card on it sounds good. The overclocking is extremely stable, and things run nice and cool thanks to that massive VRM heatsink. Now let's go ahead and talk about the 4790K. Now if you follow on Twitter, you know I've said some pretty frustrated statements about this chip. They seem to be all over the place when it comes to overclocking potential, just like the 4770K. And that really frustrated me in the beginning, but then I really had to kind of pull myself back and think about it and go, wait a minute, what is the 4790K? Well, it's an evolutionary, not a revolutionary chip. I have to remember that. So it's gonna have a lot of the inherent problems that the 4770K had. Now, one thing that they did improve upon, I have to admit, is the thermal compound. Now, we were hoping it was soldered. In the beginning, everyone thought it was soldered. It's not, it's just more of a polymer compound. The 
custom blend, I guess. I have to say that it's working because I'm currently running 4.6 gigahertz on air. You could never do that with a Haswell uh, 4770K. They just get way too hot. But this thing has been running for about an hour. And yeah, I mean, we're sitting right now in the mid 70s to low 80s. Peak maximum temp achieved so far on all the cores is 88, 90, 89, and 81. So yeah, that 90 could be scary. But keep in mind, that's still 15 degrees Celsius from TJ Maxx. And no, we're not talking about the store. We're talking about where the CPU starts to throttle. The fact that you can do that on air, and I'm currently running 1.309 volts. Yes, you heard me right. 1.309 volts on air. And it's not even a high-end air cooler. It's a $50 air cooler that's able to run at this speed. Now, the cool thing with that is it means that the thermal compound is certainly doing its job. And it means that us water coolers are gonna be able to push these things even farther as thermals are no longer gonna be what's holding back a lot of our overclocks as they were with the 4770K. Why was I mad in the beginning? Well, I think because I was expecting a better overclocker, but then I have to remember, like I said, this is inherently inheriting all of the problems that 4770K had with the exception of the thermal paste. Now they added a few extra transistors and, and capacitors inside the chip, which make things a little bit more stable when it comes to power delivery. And I have to say 4.6 gigahertz is pretty stable on this thing right now, especially on air. Uh, but it was not a revolutionary chip redesign. That's what Broadwell is all about. So I really have to reserve my judgment on whether or not Intel is going to actually appeal us enthusiast builders for Broadwell next year. But that's the cool thing about going Z97 is I'm now set up for Broadwell. And hopefully they actually give us something that we're asking for, which would be a five gigahertz guaranteed chip. I mean, we, we've been inching up against that five gigahertz for so long. Now the 4790K is something you should definitely consider if you're building a system today, because it makes no sense to get a 4770K considering they're within $10 of each other at almost every single retailer. And if you live near a micro center, you can get it for $279, which is how much mine cost me. So under $300, you get a chip that's nice and powerful and now nice and cool. Thank goodness for that. Hopefully the thermal compound will hold out. Now this is the chip that I'm going to be putting in Project Skunk Works, and I'm gonna be pairing it up with my EVGA Z97 classified motherboard and we'll see how well that motherboard does but in terms of overclocking this thing is absolutely fantastic and the 4790k i'm hoping once i can give more volts to it because i've seen people go as high as 1.375 volts on these chips and still maintain amazing temperatures on water so i'm hoping that that'll be me i'm hoping for a 4.8 ish 5.0 is not gonna happen with this chip. It's taken too many volts just to get 4.6. So guys, if you're building a new system, the 4790K is gonna deliver everything the 4770K does with a little better stability and a lot better thermal control. I was hoping for more. Unfortunately, I had to remind myself, evolutionary, not revolutionary. The Intel TikTok upgrade system, it's still a Haswell. That's what you have to remember. It's still a Haswell chip, but the cooling aspect of it alone makes sense to a new builder. If you're currently on a 4770K, don't even consider updating. If you're on a 3770K, I'm upgrading from a 3770, but that's mostly because I'm in a position where I can make these upgrades make sense for me cost-wise. Uh, I probably wouldn't recommend it even for 3770K owners. And uh, it's hard for me to say exactly who Unless you're on a really old, like a 900 series Intel i7, I don't recommend jumping whatsoever uh, to this chip. It's just not a big enough improvement. So guys, it's been Jace Two Cents. Follow on Twitter if you want to see the tweets I said where I was like, oh, I hate this chip, this chip, blah, 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 blah. No, I didn't really say that. But follow on Twitter if you guys want to talk some more tech stuff. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.